I'm going to do something a little different this morning. Our revival is coming up, but even without revival, um, this is where the Lord has led us today. I, uh, I trust, I pray, I hope that uh, revival is on your mind as one major event that you want to be able, if you are able, to participate in at every service. And that you have people that you are praying for, people that you are working with, people that you are going to invite, encourage, bring with you, whatever. It's just a couple weeks away, not far away. <clears throat> if you look at uh, this sheet, the white copy that I gave you, it is entitled Sharing Jesus with Others, and it is taken from Matthew 28, 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. The reason that Jesus has commanded us to share the good news, the gospel, is given to us in that passage of scripture. He has commanded us to. Now you might say to me, well, he gave those words to his disciples. Well, if, if we take that attitude, then we just well throw our Bible away because it was always spoken to somebody else ages and ages ago, and it doesn't apply to us. But it does apply to us. Because what God said from Genesis 1-1 all the way through to Revelation, to the end of that book, God has intended for you and I. He may have spoken to others. He may have shared it from other occasions. But it is spoken to us. We are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are followers of Christ. And Jesus gave these words to his disciples and to all who would be his disciples following in time to come. And he commanded. He didn't ask. He didn't say, would you think about it? The Bible says in those words that I have commanded you. And then he went on to say, I'm with you always. I'm going to be with you. So I'm here to help you. Okay? Now, what's to say next? It says, no one can make you do it, and that's true. You don't want to do it. You don't feel like you know how to do it. You don't care to do it. Whatever the reason, nobody can make you do it. You're offending the Lord Jesus Christ. You're hurting that individual who doesn't know Christ. Because if you or someone doesn't share Christ with them, at some point in time, they're going to die. And they're going to end up like the rich man in Luke 16 in that place called hell. That could be your spouse. That could be your parent. That could be your son or daughter, your son-in-law, daughter-in-law, your grandchildren, your great-grand... It, it could be your neighbor, your best friend, whatever. That's something that we need to allow to sink in. No one can make you do it. It's something that, because Jesus said for you and I to do it, that we need to do, period. It's as simple as that. So if you do, you must have enough understanding of the lostness of man and the truth of the scriptures. What does the Bible say about the lostness of man? What does the Bible say? Is the scripture true? And if we believe it to be true, and if we didn't, we wouldn't have become a Christian in the first place. Secondly, you must have enough confidence or enough faith in who you are as a child of God and in your Lord's promise to sustain you in sharing with others. You may be fearful. You may be afraid. You may be shy. Jesus said what? I am with you always. 
Thirdly, you must have an alertness to the opportunity and a willingness to share. Those opportunities come along to us in life and we must notice them and be ready to share. Perhaps you are nervous or don't think you could do a very good job. Do you know yourself and your personal relationship with the Lord? That's important, folks. Where do I stand with the Lord right now? Is it where he wants me to be? Or am I kind of just drifting along? Have I taken a detour? Know yourself and your personal relationship with the Lord. Is it genuine? Is it true? Pray and ask God to help you. Jesus said many times for us to pray and ask him, and he would be there, wouldn't he? Didn't he? And isn't the Spirit of Christ within us to be right there as Christ promised? Use this paper if you need, a track, a marked Bible. You're sharing with them how to be forgiven of their sins, how to escape eternal death. Because that's what's going to happen to them. I had a funeral Friday afternoon, Shirley's sister. And in that funeral, I started out with John 11 for the family and those friends and caring ones of the family and, and of Mary. And for all those who were Christians there. When I got done with that, I moved over to Luke 16 and the rich man and what happened to him. I did that on purpose because there is probably one of the best times when people are thinking about, I'm going to die one of these days. I'm going to be like that person up there. I'm not going to live forever. You have their attention. One of the best moments for having their attention that you will ever get. And so it was a good time to present the gospel. What do you believe? Okay. You are sharing with them how to be forgiven, to escape eternal judgment or hell, how to be saved, how to have an eternal relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ, how to go to heaven, know the peace and love and joy of Jesus. And folks, there's nothing more important that you could ever do for anyone than that. The greatest love you and I can share and show to someone is to share the gospel. So the question is, do you truly know him? You cannot genuinely share something you do not know. Are you yourself sure about your salvation? Have you accepted Jesus Christ? You know without question, without doubt, without hesitation that you've made that decision. You've asked Jesus to forgive you of your sin, come into your heart, and you've committed yourself to his lordship. The following is a fairly good statement about true believing. Belief as mere profession, credence, or concept is except exceedingly common and often the result of ignorance or deception and not grounded in facts of knowledge or truth. Now, you may or may not agree with me, but we have so many Christians on the books according to all the statistics. But when it comes down to those in the churches on Sunday, it's almost a minimal amount. Our church is no different. People who haven't been to church in 20, 30, 40 years and they don't live like they ever had a relationship with Christ. They need to be confronted. As well as those who say, I've never, never had anyone ask me about giving my life to Christ. Belief is mere profession. 
There is so, so much of that in our world today. I'm a Christian. Well, are you living like a Christian ought to live? Maybe you've been a very committed Christian and you've taken one of those detours that Satan brought along and you've taken that and gotten kind of off the path of the Lord. That happens to us, folks. But if it happens, the Lord's going to keep saying to us, you need to come back over here to my path. You need to come back over here with me. And he's going to continue to say that until we do. And you know where we'll find him? Right where we left him. It must be based on a personal confidence in God. You've got to believe in God. You've got to believe in the Bible and what it says, who God is and what he is. It must be based upon a doctrinal concept of the essential body of revealed truth. That's the word of God. It must be revealed by faithfulness, a Christian believer in his lifestyle and the teachings of revealed truth as an evidence or fruit of the believer's true belief our trust in God. In other words, if Jesus is my Lord, then I'm going to live like he is my Lord. And number four, it must reveal Christ alone to be the object of faith. There is no other way of becoming forgiven of our sins, being redeemed, of entering into the kingdom of God, except through Christ and Christ alone. To truly know him is kind of like a baseball diamond. I've pictured one over on the right-hand side of your handout. It's the ABCs of salvation. You've got to admit that you're a sinner. If someone is lost and God's speaking with them, they, they, they can tell you, you know, I've, I've been having questions. I've been thinking about that. You see, God's spirit has been working on them. That's what he's been doing. And yes, they're ready to admit that they are a sinner. Second, you've got to believe in Jesus. There is no other way to salvation with God except through Jesus Christ and him alone. That's the B. The C is you've got to confess your faith. I receive him I accept him as my savior and my lord now folks listen to me very closely he cannot be your savior if he's not your lord help people to understand that and he cannot be your lord if he cannot be your savior they go together you cannot separate those two if he becomes our savior then he must become our Lord if we truly believe and we truly give our heart to Jesus Christ look over in the little diagram you can never be a winner until you have rounded all the bases you've come to home plate you're going to listen to the gospel okay now if you're going to score a run you got to get back to home plate isn't that the way baseball's played Mm -hmm. That's the way baseball played in it. All right, so you can go to first base. You've got to admit that you're a sinner. You can go to second base. You've got to believe in Jesus Christ, that he is the way to peace and forgiveness with God. There is no other way. Third, you've got to confess if you come to third base. And then you can come home. But if you don't do every one of those steps and come to home plate, you're never going to get there, folks. Never. When you first stand at the home plate, you have the opportunity to be a winner. But you're not a winner until we do all three and come across the home plate. People need to understand that. What is your testimony? Your testimony is what you believe. Through the years, I have asked from time to time, and I have people give me a blank stare. People look confused. Some people smile. 
because they know what I'm talking about. Have you ever developed your testimony of your salvation experience? Can you sit down and recall and share with me or someone else in this room or someone else around you how you came to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? I have found over the years so, so many who have never done that. I'm a Christian. Well, how did you become a Christian? What happened in your life? And yours is going to be different than mine, and ours is going to be different than somebody else's. If I were to start, I would tell you that I was a small boy in a great big old farmhouse, and my mother had started the washing machine to do the weekly wash. I was sitting there on a bench reading a book, and my mother, because we had been going to church for the last few months, my mother asked me, Charles, have you ever accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? And I said, no. And my mother stopped the washing machine and led me to Christ right then. And your testimony is going to be different from everybody else's. Do you know your testament. Can you put your experience in words? Folks, if we can't do that, we need to go home and work on that today. Because it's hard to share the gospel with somebody if we can't tell them how we experienced our coming to Christ ourselves. That's important. It's one of the big steps in your walk with Christ. If you haven't done that, you need to work on what my life was like before I was saved. How I understood my need of salvation, how I accepted Jesus, what Jesus means to me today, how my life is different because of Jesus. You don't have to develop something out of every one of those statements or wordings. But sit down and put your testimony. How was I saved? What happened to me when I came to Jesus as my Savior? Many most professing Christians have never developed their own testimony and thus wouldn't know how to share one if they were asked. If a person cannot put the above points into expression or something similar to it, then they should probably search their heart to see if they have truly accepted Jesus or not. Our culture Christianity is a major word in our culture but it's not a major word in our experience. All you have to do is look around you at how many churches are busting the seams. Church members, preachers, and others go out and invite people to church. Well, I'd come, or I'd do this, or I'd do that. Yeah, I'm a Christian, but I, I got something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where are we? Where are we? Some samples of how to share Christ with others, how a person can be saved. John's Gospel. If you have a little Bible or if you have a bigger Bible, you might want to write these down, mark these in your Bible. Well, I don't mark in my Bible. We'll then put a little piece of paper in there and put that scripture passage on there so that you can easily find it. John 3, 16 to 18, for God so loved, you know, that's one of the most known scripture passages in the Bible. Its message is the most basic of scripture. What does it say? That God, God the Father, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He came down here in the form of a man as holy God, and gave of himself that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But notice what it says. He that does not believe is condemned already. In other words, he has no hope of heaven. heaven. He has no hope of eternal life. His destiny is down there somewhere. Because he hath not believed in the name. 16, God loves you. Simple little plan. 17, why did God send his son? 18, why do we need to believe in him? John 14, 6, you can see all those. The Roman road, and the Roman road is given to you on the little printout as well with the uh, music couple that's coming for our revival. Maybe a little bit different. There's different ways to do this. There are other passages of scripture that you could use. And then they need to come to a, a simple prayer when they get done. And they need to pray it. God, it doesn't have to be said like what I have printed here. It can be said in many different ways. God, I'm a sinner. And I ask you for forgiveness. I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior and my Lord. And I want to commit my life to you from henceforth. It could be as simple as that. But they need to pray that. Because that is their statement. Their statement of actually sealing their decision about Christ. What should a Christian, page three, what should a Christian do after accepting Christ? So what do I do now? <clears throat> Publicly confess your faith and be baptized. Baptism is a profession, a confession, a statement. It is a testimony to those around you that you have made your decision about Jesus Christ publicly. Find a church home where you can study the Word of God, worship the Savior, find ways to be encouraged and strengthened in your faith, serve the Lord and fellowship with other believers. All of those things are important. Oh, I don't, I don't need the church. I don't need to go. I've got other things on Sunday. Well, bless your heart. You just shamed and disgraced God once again because of your attitude that you let other things come ahead of God. Well, you know, I've got other things to do. Well, I'm the preacher, so I'm expected to be here. You know, I'm no more expected to be here than you are expected to be here. or the other people who are members of this congregation. Because that's my duty as a Christian. That's my commitment to the Lord. That's what God's Word teaches in His book. Share your faith with others. There's lots of passages to share. In closing, number six, there is a heaven and there is a hell. I've got people very close to me and I've buried some of my family who I don't believe were Christians and it hurts. Tried to talk to them. I don't want to talk about it. All the way to the end. Do you know somebody in your family, somebody that's close to you, a brother, a sister, a spouse, mother, father, grandmother, grandfather, son or daughter, grandchild, son-in-law, daughter-in-law? You know what's going to happen to them if they don't come to Christ? They can have the, 
happiest life they can have in this old world right now, but one day they're going to end up in hell. That's where they're going to end up. All because they never chose Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. That's why it is so important for you and I to witness to our children, our family members, to tell them the truth, not just, not just soap passage the words over. We get right down to the nitty gritty with them. Oh, I, Dad, I don't want to listen. Mom, I don't want to. Well, I, you need to. Do you know what's going to happen to you? Oh, I don't believe it. Well, I'm, I believe in the Bible. Do you believe in the Bible? Well, yes, I believe in the Bible. Well, then you need to believe what the Bible says if you believe in the Bible. And you need to get right with God. Not tomorrow, but today, right now. All of us have got family members like that somewhere around us. Friends, neighbors. The Bible says there is a heaven, there is a hell. To get to heaven, we must do the ABCs. To fail to do so, to humble ourselves before God, to fail to do the ABC, Hell, not heaven, is our destiny, our punishment, and our judgment. There's a little book called Steps to Peace with God. It's a Billy Graham book. I gave you one of these this morning. If you want more of them, I have more of them to share. Just got a good order of them in. You want to share one? It's a good, easy way. Look through that book. Become familiar with that book. You can put that little booklet in your shirt pocket. You can take it with you. It's easy. When you're sitting down for a cup of coffee, soda, when you drop by to see someone, we've given those little booklets out about the gospel with Jesus Christ. We've given them out for months now. Maybe you want to give this little book somebody you know. You want more of them? I got more of them. You can sit there and open that up, and it is so easy to present the gospel if I can get my big fingers to work out here. Step number one, God's purpose for your life is peace and life. Why is it that most people don't have peace and abundant life that God planned for us to have? Why is that? Just simply turn the page. There's a problem. There's a problem. Oh, well, how about that? There's a problem. We are sin sinners. We have been separated from God because of our sin. Look at that picture over there. How can you get to God who is holy when you are a sinful person. Separation from God. Well, you know, I'm a good person. I love God. Well, I, I tell you I do. But it really isn't genuine love. I, I, I do a lot of good deeds for others. I'm living a good life. I don't cuss and I don't drink and I don't do this and I don't do that. Well, that's all right. Good for you. But you still have a problem. All the attempts that we make on our own to reach God are failures. Because God has one and one way only to reach Him and that's through His Son, Jesus Christ. No bridge reaches God except one. That's that little page across there. And what is that one? What is God's bridge? It's the cross. It's what Jesus has come into this world and what he's done. How he's died, given himself as a sacrifice for our sin, shed his, shed his blood for our sins. That's what it is. You see, God has provided the one and only way. Each person must make a choice. Do I go by the way of the cross? by the way of Jesus, 
to get to God or not. That's the choice. It's as simple as that. So what's our response? Prayerfully, our response will be to receive Christ. And there's some passages. Where are you? Are you here with people, sin, rebellion, separation, or are you here with God, peace, forgiveness, abundant life, and eternal life? And then over at the back, will you receive Jesus Christ right now? Here's how you can do it. It's the ABCs again. Maybe not listed ABC, but that's what it is. And there's a simple prayer that they could pray, but they don't have to read that and pray that exact prayer. They can put it in their own words as long as they understand what they're praying. And on the back, I like these little tracks because on the back, so many tracks want to give you the plan of salvation, but they just drop you right there. They don't, they don't take you on to where you need to go in your Christian life. So what do you do when you become a Christian? Read your Bible every day to know Christ better. Talk to God in prayer every day. Tell others about Christ. Worship, fellowship, serve with other Christians in a church where Christ is preached. As Christ's representative in a needy world demonstrates your new life by your love and concern for others. Live the Christian life. Live for Christ. That's it. Do you have any questions this morning? We're doing our different today. Do you have any questions? Do you ever put your testimony in words? Do you ever put it together? A little, little statement about how you came to know Christ and what you did? Work on that, will you? Work on that. You need to master that. Because somebody's going to ask you, well, have you, have you, have you done this? Huh? Yeah. Yes, I've done that. Let me tell you how I, I asked Jesus to come into my life. What happened? We need to put that down, get it, get it up here in our mind. It comes back to living for Jesus. It comes back to trying to be what God wants us to be. It comes back to living the word, giving ourselves to the Lord. That's what it comes down to. Let's pray together. Our Father and our God, you have blessed us many ways, many times, always you are there. You have provided for us in the greatest need that we have ever had or would ever have, and that is the need of forgiveness of sin, the salvation that we need in order that we might come to you. You provided that for us through Jesus Christ. Father, help us to put our testimony together so we know how to share it. And help us when we go to our family members and our friends and our neighbors to say, if you were to die today, where would you spend eternity? They might say, well, you know, I don't know. Or I'm a Christian. Have you made a commitment to Christ? Really? Are you going to church anyplace? Why don't you come to go to church with us? Well, I, I, I'm, I, I just haven't made that. Could I share with you? Father, help us. Help us. You've got greater plans for us than what we've, what we've discovered. Help us to find those and be faithful. Bless, Father, in the days to come, the months, the, the years to come, if Jesus tarries. Help us in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I ask you this morning, is there any decisions that the Lord has spoken to you to make today? Have you given your heart and your life to Jesus Christ to be one of his children?
Have you acknowledged your sin? Ask Jesus to forgive you of your sin and come into your life. Have you followed the Lord in baptism? Have you got a church home? Do you need to move a church membership? Do you need to recommit your life to the, Is there any decision that you would make today? 